Okay, so thank you, John. Fascinating, fascinating talk. And this will be yet another talk on security. And actually, half of the talk is uh, praising Tetragon, so maybe this talk will be much uh, shorter right now. Um, so, okay, today's topic will be uh, securing CICD through eBPF. Uh, in the upcoming talk, I will showcase to you how I take this uh, great technology of eBPF and try to solve for it some of the uh, most, mo some of the tough issues that we have in securing CICD pipelines. So, this is an eBPF uh, conference, so we'll be introducing eBPF, introducing some of the uh, tooling uh, uh, the community built for eBPF. And then we will describe what is uh, CICD, uh, what risks pose to CICD pipelines, uh, what is the security issues we have in CICD. Um, then we will merge both technology, eBPF and CICD, and showcase what the possible solution could be uh, uh, to solve these issues through uh, utilizing uh, eBPF technology. Uh, we'll tackle that uh, solution through uh, looking some of the most prevalent attacks we have over the CICD pipelines in the recent years. Uh, some of them were attacking the software supply chain. Um, later, we will deep, uh, get a bit uh, a deep dive into how can we implement such concept. Uh, and stay tuned because we have also several demos. And finally, we'll talk a bit of the future plan for this concept. Okay, I'm, I'm Alex Elgaib. I'm senior security researcher for uh, SciCode. Uh, previously, our uh, team leader for the malware research team at Checkpoint, where I re reverse engineer some complex pieces of malware that originated both from cybercrime and APTs. Uh, nowadays, I'm a vulnerability researcher uh, at SciCode, uh, research vulnerabilities, and also mitigations for software supply chain attacks. Uh, SciCode is a cybersecurity uh, company that provides a complete software supply chain uh, solutions for organizations. Okay, I bet some of you already uh, know this uh, architecture by now. Um, so what is eBPF? eBPF is a re revolutionary technology that originated in the Linux kernel uh, that allows you to load a sandboxed uh, code into the kernel. It allows you efficiently and safely uh, to extend kernel capabilities uh, without uh, modifying any kernel source code or writing uh, complex pieces of uh, uh, kernel modules. Uh, so why do we need eBPF? Uh, I think we had uh, enough reasons uh, up to this point, uh, but uh, uh, in short, we can uh, get uh, great uh, tracing abilities, obser observability, and of course, uh, we can uh, create a security mechanism in the kernel, uh, effectively, safely, uh, without uh, a lot of hard work. So specifically in this talk, we won't be talking a lot on uh, BPF code, on how to write BPF code, or more on the, of the concept of taking eBPF technology and, uh, and uh, solving security issues with it. There's plenty of tutorials uh, explaining that. Some of the BPF tooling that exist uh, open source uh, nowadays, uh, uh, like uh, I am, I bet some people here are here who will get started with writing BPF code. So there are BCC and BPF Trace, great tooling to get it started and get your first uh, BPF code uh, uh, compiled and running. Uh, there's uh, several issues with these uh, tools. There are demands, uh, kernel headers, and recompiling for uh, every operating system. Um, LibPF is a library that introduced a, a concept called CoRE, compile once, run everywhere. Uh, it solves several uh, issues, like uh, as it said, you, you don't need to compile for every operating system. Uh, most uh, latest Linux distributions contain the BTF headers, which is BPF type format uh, that uh, allows uh, this uh, CoRE applications run uh, easily uh, on every modern Linux system. Uh, some of the uh, uh, popular uh, op uh, open source projects that utilize this core, Alcilium, Tetragon, uh, and more that allows you with one liner to install uh, a BPF code on your machine and uh, uh, achieve uh, great things. 
So a bit on CI/CD. Um, I bet almost every developer project nowadays uh, embedded some kind of CI/CD in, into the pipeline. It it helps you to automate uh, processes and uh, uh, and quicken the, the development process. Uh, such simple uh, CI/CD pipeline could be uh, taking your source code, uh, check out it, uh, compile it uh, either through a a Docker build, Golang, Makefile, or whatever your compilation method is, uh, taking the artifact you created from this compilation, put it in some uh, some registry, uh, maybe some package manager, and uh, even sometimes take this artifact and deploy it in your production environment, staging, uh, testing, or whatever. Uh, such processes has a few issues. For example, it demands highly privileged access to uh, some very sensitive assets. For example, the process I just described demands sometimes right access to your code repositories. It demands uh, right access to artifact registries or pack package managers, uh, and sometimes even to the cloud infrastructure. Uh, so uh, lately, we, we are observing that uh, the attacks on software supply chain are arising because of, uh, of these risks. Uh, so securing CI/CD is hard. Uh, why it's hard? First, we don't have a lot of security tooling. Uh, the standard security tooling like uh, antiviruses, EDR, firewalls, just don't fit for these purposes. And the uh, other application security tooling focuses more on the finding vulnerabilities and vulnerable packages instead of uh, securing the, the pipeline itself. Second, uh, CI/CD systems usually have a lot of configurations. Whoever uh, tried to play with the Jenkins a bit uh, knows what I'm talking about. Each uh, misconfiguration could lead maybe to potential uh, compromise of the system. Next, uh, usually CICD system, because of lack of security tooling, also have really low visibility. So this is another issue, a uh, security uh, SOC team uh, need to handle it. And lastly, some of the systems, for example, GitHub Actions, uh, uh, Git, uh, GitLab and more are built on ephemeral environments. This means that every build uh, is creating a new machine or a new uh, uh, container environment that's uh, creating the build and destroyed afterwards. So this makes uh, security even harder. So I propose uh, let's take this idea of ABPF and try to, uh, to try to solve some of the security issues we have in CI CD. Why specifically eBPF? Uh, it's safe, it's easy to build a eBPF problem, Re relatively easy, I don't want even to, to say it's really easy. Uh, and it can solve some of the observability and security issues we have. Uh, as I said about Core it can work out of the box for latest Linux kernel, so it will also work, work out of the box for the, most of the uh, CI systems uh, themselves. And of course, it has very powerful community and tooling that pushes the, techno the technology forward. So uh, uh, this concept of creating an is eBPF agent that will be easily deployed on any CR system and will monitor or protect using some uh, configuration. So let's, let's tackle this uh, concept for some of the latest uh, uh, attacks we have over the software supply chain and CI/CD CI, CI, system in the recent years. The first and maybe most uh, fam famous one is SolarWinds. In SolarWinds, there were a Sunspot malware that was planted on the build server for a SolarWinds uh, corporation uh, that replaced the code file just before it being compiled to a malicious one, which resulted to a, a malicious artifact that was a, uh, signed by SolarWinds and deployed to its, to its many customers. Uh, so how this specific, this ABPF agent could maybe solve this issue? First, the most straightforward uh, method will be uh, to deny uh, any write access to the source code file during the CI build. It's uh, plain simple, but it's also can be very effective. I'm finding really hard to find the use cases uh, where a CI uh, workflow or some build process need to have write access to the source code file. 
uh, another poss possible uh, solution would be to monitor process execution, file system execution, and maybe uh, compare it to with the previous execution of the same build. Uh, this can work because usually, uh, uh, usually workflows or usually builds are, can be very repetitive in their task. They're doing the same task over and over again, so it can be quite effective to compare it with previous execution of the same task. Let's look at another uh, famous uh, incident, which will be the CodeCov bash installer compromise. Uh, the bash installer of CodeCov was modified by a malicious actor. Uh, CodeCov, it's a code coverage tool that usually was run uh, during the, the CI workflow of uh, many projects. So on every uh, CI that was installing CodeCov during that was compromised, it was several months, I think, that was compromised. Is also was exfiltrating all its environment variable inside the CI to some uh, to the attacker controlled server. Why the environment variables? Because, as I said, the uh, CI process has is a lot of uh, privileged access to uh, uh, to many uh, uh, to many systems, and usually the, the access is done by through some secret tokens that are saved as environment variable. Specifically in CodeCov, they were after uh, GitHub tokens that will let them access private repositories. So how we could maybe uh, help with this case? Uh, first, uh, the most uh, naive and simple uh, solution would be let's monitor all the network connections that our uh, builds are doing. As I said, that they are quite repetitive. They doesn't have to, like, to access hundreds of say, domains or IPs. Uh, they can, it's, uh, the, the list should be quite uh, simple. Uh, a more advanced solution, let's create an uh, allow listing. Let's say, let's say every process that doesn't, uh, that so it connects to, to an IP or domain that's not in the allow list should be terminated uh, immediately. The third use case is more like a, 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 a that doesn't talk about specific uh, incidents, but a group of incidents that we see arising in the, in the recent year are install, installation of malicious dependencies through a, the, uh, through the CI. Uh, usually when we are building software, we are installing dependencies. Uh, usually the, we don't know what dependencies exactly we are installing. We don't know whether they are malicious or not. And there are many incidents where, uh, uh, um, where a project during the build and compilation uh, they install malicious uh, packages, whether they have been uh, hijacked by a uh, some attacker or maybe some uh, type of squatting and mistake for the package name. For example, you, uh, you put in the requirements file for Python, you put request instead of the popular requests uh, package. This request package could be uh, malicious. So similar to code code, we could also, uh, we could also stop it through some uh, tight, uh, network, uh, tight network monitoring. So now we, now we explain the concept. Let's talk about how we are going to implement it. So I'm going to show you some POC that I built uh, based on uh, Tetragon uh, to demonstrate the concept uh, that is also uh, executed on GitHub Actions. So first, uh, you all heard uh, John's talk, really fascinating talk about Tetragon. Tetragon is an extremely powerful tool. Uh, that allows you observability and run to enforcement for, uh, uh, for security purposes. So I will run it quite quickly because you already you already seen it, uh, but uh, uh, why I choose specifically Tetragon? Because it's highly generic. It allows you to build policies and to load them to Tetragon engine, which also is a highly capable engine that uh, uh, loads it into the BPF code. Second, it has limited but powerful features to enforce based on predefined filters, so we can enforce on the kernel level, and that doesn't have uh, to write code in the user mode to stop this. And third, unlike other powerful tools that exist on the, in the eBPF uh, ecosystem, Tetragon also works outside of Kubernetes environment. This is important because the CICD system don't work, uh, uh, can work also outside Kubernetes environment, and for example, GitHub Actions is not working in Kubernetes, it's, it it's a, has a dedicated new machine for every new build. So Tetragon answered these uh, requirements. 
So the, PO, the architecture of the POC is quite simple. Uh, it has two parts. It's uh, the agent, which is the most important part, and it's some server that uh, in our lab environment that will uh, get all the, all the results and all the detection we had on the agent part. We don't have to, to the server is not a mandatory, but it's only to, to see the results and to ease the, uh, the, experiment, the experiment. So in the agent part, we have uh, two pieces of code. We have Tetragon uh, ex executable, and we have our agent, uh, simple agent written in Golang that installs uh, Tetragon on the machine and communicate it with on the, on the uh, it gives the, the policy that it should be loading to the, uh, to the Linux kernel and extracts all the events and sends it to our, uh, to our lab environment to understand what's going on in the, in the, in the build itself. So some of the functionality we uh, implemented in this PLC, the first is observability for the uh, build system, understanding all the executed processes, build some process, simple process tree out of that to see domains and IPs. It's nothing fancy here. Then we implement also a simple uh, source code integrity uh, feature to stop against attacks such as SolarWinds uh, and to experiment with this feature. Then the third, which is the most important to my opinion, is the network uh, protection. It's create some uh, simple uh, allow listing for domains and block any connection that's not in this specific list. These uh, abilities are demonstrated on GitHub Actions, but it can easily be deployed on any other uh, uh, CI system, which works on Linux, of course. Uh, and this uh, functionality is, of course, proving the ability to stop the use cases we uh, presented. Okay, so I will be running it quite uh, fast because I don't have time for the demo. So the, in, the installation is quite uh, easy, it's through uh, what's called the custom uh, GitHub action. We just uh, add uh, eBPF agent action in the CI. Uh, whoever not familiar with the GitHub action uh, uh, syntax, it's not really required here. Uh, in short, for every installation, I'm just putting a Docker container uh, privileged in a detached mode that uh, installs this Tetragon and the agent we wrote. Uh, to uh, secure the machine. So for example, if we have some uh, hello world uh, CI in a GitHub action, first it has three parts. The first, we're, the first one we're installing the EPPF agent, uh, and then we're running two commands, to run the ls command uh, curl to google.com, and on the server side, uh, we have a simple process tree for uh, for all what the build was doing, for the runner.worker process, is the main process of executing steps in GitHub Action. And we also see the contacted domains. And so let's go over quickly how we implemented the, uh, the functionalities. Uh, for the tracing part, it was quite easy because Tetragon, as I said, is a really powerful tool. Uh, it's giving us the entire uh, process list that is executed, including it enriches it with additional information such as uh, the parent, the arguments, the, uh, the binary, uh, and more. When we combine it with TCP connect tracing, which is tracing for all the TCP connection made uh, by the operating system, we can also, uh, giving addition context to the connection, understand which process did, uh, uh, did the connection so we can terminate it. In case of DNS tracing, there's, it's a feature that is missing in Retrogon, so we have to do use some external tool that uh, that uh, showing us all the DNS uh, requests made by the by the agent. Uh, of course, uh, ultimately we won't want it to be implemented in eBPF as well. But for the POC, we, it we, was used as external tool. One of the strength of this uh, of this tool of this agent comes when we call a deep inspection. The CI usually uh, are using some external models, external tools, binaries, packages, and et cetera. We don't have complete visibility over what, uh, what each package is ex executing. So with this tool, we have the complete visibility uh, the, of the entire, for example, process tree that's executed by the CI, even if it was using external dependencies. 
For example, my CI was using uh, the action to set up uh, Go, which is a co very common action in GitHub Actions. So I can, I can see the entire process tree of that specific uh, uh, setup Go and uh, understand, if it was, and understand if it was doing some malicious activity. So for, for integrity, uh, as I said, we can, do, we can implement integrity on several levels. Uh, specifically for this POC, we implement only code integrity, but uh, ultimately we want also uh, to verify the builder, the builder hash that was, wasn't altered. For example, if it's a Go, Make, make or, or a Docker, we want to verify that no memory modifications were made to the process. It could be a valid hash, but was uh, modified uh, in the memory. And we want to verify that no write operation also made for the artifact created by the, by the builder. So this is how we implement uh, code integrity. This is a Tetragon uh, a syntax. It was simple, simple uh, policy that we're checking that no write operations are made over file that ends with that go or go that sum or go that mod. And lastly, network protection. Uh, we are receiving a list of uh, allow list of domains and we're checking uh, that uh, any process that uh, made, makes, makes connection outside of this list will be terminated. So how we will uh, uh, implement this? For example, we are saving as a network, network policy uh, input variable uh, uh, to receive list of domains that allow to, to be accessed. For example, we are using code code, so we're adding code code domains and other additional domains that GitHub Action is using internally. We are, uh, uh, we are resolving these domains into a list of IPs, and we're building the right Tetragon policy uh, to, uh, to load it into the kernel, to the BPF code, so any, uh, as any IP access that wasn't in this list will be uh, terminated. So, okay, let's see some of the, of the demos. First, I will start my server. I will demonstrate a real world scenario of solar winds. First, without the mitigation, and later I put the mitigation on. So I'm putting remote point. This is the server that's sitting on my machine. I, I'm tunneling it through Ngrok, and uh, I'm starting the CI. Let's see how the CI looks like. Let's start the server, right. So uh, this CI basically installs the eBPF agent. See it, right? Um, we also install some SolarWinds attack setup. This is, of course, artificial. Uh, this, won't have, this won't be in a real CI, but it's only to simulate the, what the attacker can do if he was getting a hold of the build server. This SolarWinds uh, executable just waiting for the build process and just swap the source file with other source file, with the malicious one. And then we're just having some simple go, hello world, go link program, and finally we're executing it. So let's see what the output was for this CI. It's already over. We have out of a hack text. This means that the, uh, the attacker managed to replace the, the go link file and uh, and to, uh, to create an, a malicious uh, artifact. If we look on our server, we, have, uh, we can see the, uh, the process tree that we, from, that we are observing from our agent and some of the domains that we are accessing. accessing it. So let's run it again. But this time, this time we will enforce it. and we put a code integrity for Golang language. Uh, in this case, we will expect, uh, we'll expect the agent to understand that this binary, the solar winds that we have predefined in the CI system is touching some, some uh, Go source file and terminate the process exec uh, immediately. We also want to see that in our 
in a lab environment that we managed to, uh, to stop this threat. So let's, few, let's wait a few seconds. Okay, so when we run the uh, executable, we have, this is benign hello world. This, is, this means that the attacker didn't manage to replace the file, and we have like the, the original source file. And when we look on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the server, we can see that these two processes were killed by the agent. We are, we are searching all the processes that were received CQ. This is our method of finding a, a mitigation made. So we can see that SolarWinds, the uh, executable that we predefined at CI to do the malicious work was stopped. So this is in demo number one. Let's look in the num demo number two for CodeCov attack. Uh, so let's look on the CodeCov CI attack. First, we'll run it without, without the mitigation. So the CI of CodeCov, first we install the, the agent. And then we have a very simple said hello world golang problem, problem uh, pro program that uh, builds the code, uh, tests it, and uploads the coverage to CodeCov, but through the compromised bash uploader, not the original one, just to sim simulate uh, the, the CodeCov attack from the last year. So I think it's over. No, not yet. Let's give it a few more seconds. Yeah, it's over. So when we're looking at this, we can see this is the process tree executed, and we have an interesting line here. This is under the compromised bash uploader, which is like the code code bash uploader. It was doing a curl to some uh, unknown uh, IP or, uh, or uh, domain. This, this contains uh, the complete environment variable list of, uh, of the CI. Uh, we can also see that in the, the in the domain list. So when we run it, let's run it again. But this time we'll put an, a closed list of uh, allowed domains. Well, I have a prepared list that contains uh, GitHub, CodeCov, and a few other domains that should be all uh, allowed and benign. So similar to the solar winds in this, uh, we expect in this run, so the agent will identify that the curl inside the compromised bash uploader of CodeCov will try to access some unknown domain uh, and uh, terminate it, so, and we could see that it was terminated. So now it's running the coverage, so we will upload it. Okay, so it's quite long and ugly, uh, but this, this very long list is processor skilled. I'm, this, this is the, the, the entire argument list of the curl command because it was running uh, the end of the uh, command inside the minus uh, D parameter of curl. So, so that's, what, that's how the attacker initially wanted to send all the environment variables. So we can see that this curl command was terminated and it caused the termination of the entire uh, malicious process. Okay, so this is for demo. So what's next? Uh, this POC has many, many to-dos, has many issues. It was only to, to make, demonstrate this concept. Uh, there's a lot of improvement that we could do to the engine. There's an issue that we have, uh, uh, we have to do more uh, smarter uh, domain filtering because the user want to give a domain to, 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 for the allow list on the contractor, but eBPF receives IP. So we need to understand this uh, connection and, uh, and, and implement it better. Um, also, we have many additional features that we want uh, ideally to implement. For example, this, uh, uh, we want to be more service oriented. We, uh, the uh, the so-called agent need to understand whether it's running on GitHub Actions, on GitLab, on Jenkins, or Travis. And for example, in GitHub Action, maybe we want to allow certain steps inside the jobs to access to certain domains. For example, we have 
like a Go mode download, you want to allow only this step to access to the uh, Go package manager and, and the, the entire uh, CI sh sh shouldn't do it. Uh, there's an additional anomaly agent that we could uh, uh, implement. There's an entire work on, on uh, Salsa, uh, whoever, uh, uh, Salsa, it's a, it's a standard that uh, building uh, some industry leaders into uh, increasing the uh, uh, supply chain software artifact uh, uh, integrity. So we can't, this is, the standard says that uh, a good practice for the uh, artifact is to contain their provenance, their, their uh, recipe for how they were created. So this recipe could also be created using such a, a tool that was run during the, the build process. <coughs> we could also uh, support additional CI systems and, uh, and more and more. So, uh, this project currently is not open source because I didn't, made, uh, to, I didn't have time to create it uh, open source, but it will be in the, in the upcoming weeks, so you can all maybe try and experiment with it. Uh, and uh, when we're looking at the future, we are considering taking this concept and maybe creating a better uh, solution for many other CI systems that will uh, uh, work also for a production grade uh, uh, level and maybe it could be adopted by many other uh, open source projects. So we would love to hear feedbacks from the community on this idea, and uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to ping me or DM me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or whatever media you want. So uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, what is the takeaway from this, from this talk? First, uh, this is an eBPF uh, conference, and I want, want to showcase how eBPF is awesome technology, and with great use cases. Uh, uh, it enables many innovations, uh, specifically for, in my case for security purposes, but for others as well. Uh, the APF community has created really great tooling. I demonstrated uh, Tetragon, how I was able to take it uh, almost out of the box and uh, uh, use it for, uh, uh, for additional uh, maybe purposes that the maintainers didn't think about in the first place. Um, and finally, of course, we welcome any individuals who want to contribute to the idea, uh, and maybe uh, cooperate on this and uh, create uh, better security solutions for uh, specifically for CI CD system or maybe for other purposes as well. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Thomas coming up to set himself up while he's plugging himself. We might have time for a couple of questions. Who has a question? Good. Um, thank you for the talk, it was great. Um, in the context of GitHub Actions, when you are, I guess, doing a SIG kill from that UPF detection, how does Actions handle that? Like, does does it just think nothing happened and keeps going about its life, or are you actually able to catch that and display to the developer in the GitHub Action panel some kind of meaningful thing of like what actually occurred? Can you maybe repeat the second part of the question? Maybe without yeah. the mask, I barely hear you. Oh, sure. Um, when, yeah. it, when it fails, like from the detection, and say the eBPF detection is running a SIG kill, uh, can GitHub Action somehow capture that and also capture maybe standard out or standard error from that failure and then display that in the GitHub action context to the developer or do they have to go to the build machine and find what happened? Yeah, basically GitHub action is just a VM, you fully yeah. control and can do, we do whatever you want. And um, what I noticed that when I'm killing such a process and there's civil secure, it just, uh, sometimes it, it stops, sometimes it continues, depends on the, on the Parameters he gave for the for the job, he can give he can give it a parameter that uh, continue even when it fails. So it will just show you like everything it's okay. But one of the core processes like the build was it was stopped. Um, so I don't trust uh, entirely the GitHub Action log system to show you like the the, the issues there. So uh, it, it's it's not its purpose. Its purpose only to show you logs from the machine, and that's it. Hey, thank, thanks for doing this. This is great. Um, just a random thought about the GitHub action. We can actually throw arbitrary signals too. So maybe there's some way that the GitHub action could catch a specific signal that we send it, right? Like we'd have to work with the GitHub folks, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 
Do you plan to take it from a POC into production? Can you maybe without the mask? Remove the mask. Oh. Will you, will you take this from a, a POC and keep working on it? Because um, that would be awesome. And if you, if you keep working on it and, you, and you're interested, I saw some of your to-dos. They looked like, like things that were on my to-do list as well, so we should talk. But if you wanted to like, um, submit like a link or something to Tetragon on the, the GitHub page, maybe we, there's some way we can link the two up so people find them. So just, mm -hmm. that was just a comment. Thanks. Yeah.